friends and hello and welcome to day number 50 and 51 of our 66 days of data with NIME live stream challenge. Today we're going to talk about bar charts and before I dive into any announcements, let me just quickly show you what we're going to build today. So let me switch to the screen here. And you see Nime, and what we're going to build today is this. You see a trusted Nime workflow. We have just extended our template, and just look what happens when I click that button. Do you see this animation? That is the one thing we're going to build today, and it's super easy, just a few notes and some pre-written code. You don't have to do any coding at all. And of course, we are going to do this nice bar chart here. All right. So this is this. Let me just get back here and let me just make a short announcement. Oh, no, wait a minute. Um, let's just turn that off because we are going to approach the nine summit. It's coming closer and closer. So Saturday in a week, I will be traveling and you can meet me at the nine summit, which happens to be from Monday 14th until Wednesday 16th of November. And I will be there because I really want to widen my horizon in regards to data science. And I've just recently written a blog post on the NIME blog where I basically laid out four reasons why you should go to the NIME summit. But maybe the most important one is that you can enjoy with the three-day pass, you can enjoy wonderful trainings. The big advantage is you have data scientists Nimers at your fingertips. So whenever an idea comes up in your mind, whenever you have a question, whenever you face a problem or something, or you just want to discuss a certain use case, you have lots and lots of Nimers right around you. And not only people from the community, but people from Nime themselves. So if you think, hey, I'm doing that text mining seminar, and training, and I want to translate it into my finance business. And this idea, do you think that works? Can you just tell me how you can directly approach them? So from my point of view, that's a huge advantage. So if you happen to be there, just step by. I will stream live on this channel here from the NIME Summit. So make sure you just say hello and tell me if you like or maybe don't like the videos. All right. So that is that. So now let's dive into NIME and let's basically have a look at what we're going to do today. So first of all, let me just show you today's task. The first task for day number 50 is create a bar chart. And oh, wait a minute. That's maybe a little bit too much. Let me just turn this one off here. All right, like this and this one of maybe though. So it's a little bit clearer for you. So again, create the bar chart to inspect evolution over time. Visualize the number of tracks by artists over years in a bar chart. Add color for each bar, for example, for each artist. Make the plot subtitle parametric. We already know how to do that for the selected time window. Inspect bars one by one in small groups and all together. Find out the most prolific artist in a specific year of your time window. Well, this one was not as difficult as it sounds. So let me just quickly show you how I have done it. Just control, double click on this component here. And here you see our time plot component. And I basically, oh, I'm in the wrong. This is the wrong one. I'm sorry. So this is the right one. We are on day number 50. You see, this is what happens when you're doing all this kind of stuff live. So basically, I come from here where we have basically the selected range of years, which we have done through the components configuration. And then we have the artists with their yearly track numbers. But we have a problem. The bar chart itself expects a nominal value as a category. So nominal means not numerical. But if you look at what comes out here, the year is an integer. It's a number. That wouldn't work. That's why we had to preempt the bar chart node here with the number to string node. And I just labeled it make the year nominal. So all I'm doing here, 
I take all from all of these columns, I just take the year and turn it from an integer into a string. And then I can basically use it in the bar chart configuration. And the category column, of course, is the year. That's the X axis that's go, that goes along the bottom. And then we have the aggregation method. Some that's quite impossible because let me just show you what happens if you do occurrence count, which is the default setting. Your bar chart will look slightly confusing or not understand because it just like the artists just occur once. What that does not make sense. So make sure that you select some here as the aggregation method. And then we have all the integer columns for all the 10 artists here as the um, artists to be shown per year, by the way. Um, let me also show you uh, the general um, plot options. So the title is number of songs per artist. Um, everything else we leave untouched except for the flow variables because one of the tasks was to make the subtitle parametric. And if you remember, we still have our flow variable that is called var table subtitle. And that is basically what we have selected here. So we just went to the tab flow variables. We opened this up. And from all the available flow variables that we have here, we just select var table subtitle. All right. And if we now execute and open views, you can see our bar chart here. By the way, that is one of the bar charts where I wish, or maybe one can, but where I wish I could configure the axis a little bit better. Because if you do not look at this in full screen window, you only, oh, now you see it. Um, so you see the years here at the bottom, and then you see the artists and the number of tracks they have released. And we see, we could, for example, just exclude Queen, or we could, for example, just look at Queen if we wanted to. And then we get this selection here. And here you see what I mean. I now see that this is 1975, but the problem here is it gets a little bit, um, yeah, hidden. So um, in some programs, you have the option to shift these axis um, labels. So that would be great if uh, one, if that is possible in NIME, someone can please tell me how. Otherwise, you just have to extend the window a little bit so you at least can read the years. All right, that was the setting for day number 50. And let me just show you where I put it. Oh, I'm sorry, not the output, but the interactive view is what we want to have a look at. We have a table, line port, stacked area plot, and now we have finally also our bar chart here. What I also like a lot about NIME, as much as I complain about the access labels here, but what I really like about NIME is that I have the option to, uh, that these, these uh, charts here are responsive, meaning if I just make this smaller, I still can see the charts. If I make this bigger, uh, they scale automatically. That's pretty nice. Something that is maybe quite difficult to do in Microsoft Excel or something like that. All right, so that is day number 50. I think we're going to have a look at day number 51. And I had some respect for this day because it talks about coding. And my understanding was always, hey, isn't this all about no coding or low coding? Yes and no. So basically, the approach of NIME to coding is you can if you're able to or if you want to, but you don't have to. And this day is the perfect example how that works. So let's first read the task, and then I show you how easy it is to even make an animation using JavaScript without a single line of code. So today's task, or day number 51's task was, let's conclude this part with some free JavaScript code. Let's investigate the generic JavaScript node. Do not worry, you do not need to code. Just explore the NIME hub for workflows and components based on the generic JavaScript view node. Drag and drop the animated bar chart component from the NIME hub into your workflow and study, for example, the evolution of artists and track count throughout the years. Wrap all the time plots in a component and investigate selections of year and artists in the composite view. Okay, so here is NIME JavaScript views on the NIME hub, and you um, basically see quite a few 
um, things that you can do um, here. And here are, as always, kind of related workflows which you can use for all kinds of things, right? So maybe you just look into this Netflix 3 and then you just um, have a look if that makes sense or not for your specific use case. But let me just quickly show you how easy it is basically with the animated bar chart. All you have to do basically is you take this little body here, this little icon, and it when you hover over it already says drag and drop and you drag and drop it into your workflow. And it imports automatically, you can see it here right now, the component from the Nime Hub server. As easy as that. And if you open up the um, component, you see all kinds of configurations you could do. You don't have to do a single line of code. So let's just quickly delete that. And let me just quickly show you how I have used it. We just go in here, close this one, and go into the time plots of day 51. And you see up and above here, we have a few more nodes. So let me just guide you through these nodes one by one. We're coming from here. But so what the what the um, animated bar chart basically needs needs is a um, yeah collection of rows. It needs um, a time series, date and time column. <coughs> and it needs some nominal columns. So let me just quickly show you how it's done. So first of all, we unpivot this data. And here's how I do it. It's basically, if you have a pivot table, you just turn it back by 90 degrees. If you just remember last time we talked about, when we talked about line top, we talked about shifting by 90 degrees and doing a pivot table, a very common task in Microsoft Excel. Here we unpivot, we undo that. So what I basically do is I keep the year in the retained columns and I keep the all the artists in the value columns because these are the values at the end that I want to animate. So let's just say, okay. And basically this is what the result looks like. We also get an additional column with row IDs, which is probably not what we want. So I just delete it here. You see it in the node monitor, the row ID column is gone. Then I have the problem that the year is an integer, it's a number. This is not something that the animated bar chart node can work with. So we first need to turn it into a string. So we convert the year to a string. So that's very easy to do. We just keep it in the green um, include box here. Then we have our year as a string. And now we can add the missing month and date, which are required to, at the end, make it a date um, column. And that's very important because if you have a number, like a year number, and want to turn it into a date column, it's not as easy. So you first turn it from number into string, and then from string into date and time. And that's basically what we've done here. In the string manipulation, you just edit years, uh, a month and days, and we overwrote the uh, column year. So at the end, it looks like this. We always have like the 1st of January. Then we can say, okay, now we have this column here, year, that is a string. Just turn it into date and time with this format. And here we already have the content of the first cell. So the test, does that work or not? All right, it does. And at the end of the day, let me just look at the output table. We have the year here. It is now, you see it by the little calendar icon. It is now a date and time column. And now this can be fed into the animated bar chart as an input. but I also want to have clear column names. So all I do basically is I rename these to artist, number of tracks and date. And then I just go into animated bar chart and say, okay, the artist's productivity over time, the bars are the artists, right? The artist. The metric for the bar size is the number of tracks. And what we want to do, we want to sum those values. That's why we unpivoted it. And then the timestamp is basically what we can see in the date and the time label granularity here. As we only have years, we only always have like the 1st of January. So we don't have anything smaller than a year, like a 
quarter or a month or a week. So we basically just say the time label granularity here is year. Okay. And this results in this nice note. You see? And you see this shifting scale here over time. One thing I'd also like to show you here is if we uncheck sum and re-execute, we basically see the, the um, scale shifting every single time. But um, I, pers I find this not very telling. So that is basically what I want to do is I want to sum over time. So who collects over time more and more productivity? Who has published more and more songs? Because the other animation for my personal liking was jumping around too much. And you might say, hey, but it is maybe more correct. Yeah, but the problem is always focus on your audience. And I guess it's important that the audience is not confused by a chart that we do, and hence I like the approach of summing it up over time, making it less confusing and more readable, quite important. So I find this quite important. So let's just quickly save that. And we now can just see here, execute and open views. This is basically our overall time series component we have created over the past few days you see our table here you see our line chart here you see our stacked area chart here and you see our bar chart here all right as always you can basically also find these nodes let me just show you find these nodes here in um in the nime hub so if you're interested in playing around with these you just go here to, let me just, can I, can I blend this in here somewhere? Let me just show. Yeah, you see it. You just go to hub.nime.com slash Covisoft, which will bring you here. And then you just click on public. And then you see all my notes. You can play around with all of these if you like, but you go to 66 days of data. And here you find all the corresponding workflows that I have uploaded so far for the 66 days of data live stream challenge. So once again, make sure you make it to the NIME uh, summit. Um, let me just turn that back one on. And basically that concludes section or part number eight of the 66 days of data with NIME challenge where we talked about time series. Next, we're going a little bit deeper into how we can configure components even more. And that's what we'll do tomorrow. So see you tomorrow on 66 Days of Data with Naim. Take care and bye-bye.